This is an introduction to App Image, Linux apps that run anywhere by Simon Peter. App Image is a format for distributing upstream provided application binaries. That really makes it easy for users to get and run the latest version of Linux applications. And this works even on stable base systems, which means the packaging may not interfere with the libraries installed on the base system in any way. In other words, when you download an app image, it doesn't touch your base system. It also makes it easy for upstream software projects to provide official and or nightly or continuous builds for Linux, just like they tend to do for macOS and also for Windows, but not for Linux in many cases. Now with App Image, this is really easy to do, and I think it increases the testing velocity by what I call making software fluid. It's really easy to release, download, test, and make the cycle real fast. Also, App Image doesn't need any intermediaries like distributions or repositories where you first have to think about how do I get my open source software into a distribution or into a repository. You can just provide your application to your end users without any intermediaries in between you and the end user. A few words about myself. I'm Simon. I am a OS X and Linux live system user. I'm not really an application developer, so I have been stretching this itch for over 10 years. I started with the Click project, which involved into portable Linux apps, and now finally into App Image. The feedback from the community originally wasn't so great, so I almost gave up on the idea, but I'm getting ahead of myself, and I will come back to this point during this talk. So let's describe the problem. Is there a problem at all? Or is the way we are packaging and distributing software for Linux today not sufficient? So let's dive right in. As a user, I want to download an application from the original author and I want to run it on my Linux desktop system just like I would do with a Windows or Mac application on the day it is released. And right now that's not so easy with Linux applications, right? You all know it. If you go to a download page of your favorite application today, chances are that you will find download links for OS X and for Windows, but a bunch of different instructions and links and repositories and blah for Linux, but no real simple and easy way to just download and run the application for Linux. If you don't believe me, try downloading the application VLC, Video Land Client, from the original author's homepage today and you will see what I'm talking about. So with an app image it's very different. To run an app image you simply download one file, you make it executable by the little command I'm showing here or by the GUI and finally you can run the application. That's it! No repositories, no fiddling around, just downloading one file from the original application author and you're able to run it. Now as an application author, I want to provide packages for Linux desktop systems, but without the need to get it into a distribution and without having to build for gazillions of different distributions. You might think this is a bit theoretic, but once you try to get your application into every distribution out there, and I'm just showing the most popular ones on this page, you will see what I'm talking about. Of course, you could also just wait for application packagers to pick up your application, but until that happens, well, probably you're five versions ahead already, and this is not really fluid or fast or agile in any way. So, 
this statement is a real concern to people who should really know, right? Here is a quote from no other than Linus Torvalds on the DEPCONF 2014 conference. This is what he had to say. We basically don't make binaries for Linux. Why? Because binaries for Linux desktop applications is a major fucking pain in the ass. Right, you don't make binaries for Linux. You make binaries for Fedora 19, Fedora 20, maybe there's even like Red Hat Enterprise Linux 5 from 10 years ago, you make binaries for Debian Stable and so on and so on. Maybe I should really insert the video of Linux talking here. Another use case, as a tester, I want to run multiple continuous builds from Jenkins or Travis CI in parallel, quickly and without messing up my system. So here is our solution. First of all, what are the objectives? Well, the solution should be simple it should also maintain binary compatibility because the greatest source code isn't of any use if there is no binary that runs on your system. It should also be distribution agnostic and I'm going one step further than that. Our solution is designed in a way that it requires no special support from the distribution whatsoever. So this should guarantee that the solution runs on the majority of available Linux distributions today. We also want to remove the need for installation completely. So for example, if you take a large application like LibreOffice, I don't want to have to install that first. This feels so like Windows 95, right, where you had to download an installer and run that installer and watch the progress bar crawl from the left hand to the right hand, I want to do entirely away with that need for installation. In other ways, in other words, the application as it is at the time when you download it should be exactly the same as it is when you execute it. This also means we can keep apps compressed all the time. We don't have to unpack or uncompress applications. This all happens transparently during runtime. Also, our system allows us to put applications anywhere. In other words, to relocate applications. This makes it really easy to put an app, let's say on a USB stick and take it with you. Also, applications should be read only, which means after you have downloaded an application, you can be 100% sure that the application cannot change itself in some way. Also, when making these packages, it should also take into account that we don't have the source code for all applications, so it should be possible to package applications this way without having to recompile. We also want to keep the base operating system untouched. This not only means that when you download and run an application, it shouldn't exchange the libraries in half of your system. It also means that in order to be able to run an application packaged in this way, we should not need any type of runtime or binary that needs to be installed before you can even start using the system. Finally, all of this should not require any root rights. So is it possible to create such a system? Yes. And here are the key ideas. The real central idea here is that one application should equal one file on your file system. This makes it real easy to manage the applications yourself without needing any sort of package manager or complicated system. So this, if you remember only one thing from this talk, it should be that app image really stands for one app equals one file. Now this one file of course doesn't have to bundle everything that the application needs to run, but only those parts that we cannot reasonably assume to be present on your target distribution anyway. 
which means that the app image really contains everything an application needs to run except what is part of most desktop distributions anyway. Another key principle of app image is that we don't allow any dependencies other than what we assume is included in the targeted base operating systems. So as long as we assume that a certain library or binary is included in all the major desktop distributions, we don't have to include it in the application app image. But if there is a doubt about that, then we bundle it. Also a key idea is that creating an app image and distributing it to your end user should be direct without any intermediaries like distributions or repositories that are sitting between you the application author and me the application user. This is the winning model that we see on other desktop systems as well and even systems where there is a central app store well you can judge for yourself but I would say that the dominant model is still not to have any sort of intermediary between the application author and the application user. Finally key idea simplicity wins so we try to do away with all the complex stuff and just reduce to the max. So what is an app image? The app image is the one file that I talked about and it is really one file per application. You can have such a file for every version of an application and they can also coexist. The app image contains two parts. The first part is a little exec executable header and the second part is a disk image that holds the application, the payload. Now, the executable is a regular ELF binary, a Linux executable binary, which mounts the disk image and then executes the content of the disk image. The mounting happens with the fuse system, which means that you don't need to be root in order to mount the app image. The disk image itself is a regular ISO file. It is also compressed and it can be loop mounted using the normal kernel method that is part of every Linux distribution. So if you want to peek inside a disk image, just loop mount it and you can inspect its contents. The disk image contains the payload, which is your application that you're caring about, as well as its dependencies. So what is an app dir? An application directory. Well, an application directory is a file system tree that contains the app and all of its dependencies that we do not assume to be part of the base system. In addition, there is one file called app run and this is the main entry point. So this is the executable that is executed when you run the app image. Making the apter, you should always keep in mind that the apter must not have any dependencies that cannot be expected to be part of every target system or distribution that you're targeting. The most practical approach to do this is to compile your application on a build host that is older than the oldest target system. And then you bundle everything that is not part of all your target system inside the application image. There are some additional ideas. Well, what about updates? So if we have an application that comes in a 100 megabyte app image, and let's assume we're doing nightly builds of that application. It wouldn't be so great if I would have to download 100 megabytes every day. So using binary delta updates we can just download the parts of the application that actually have changed and that's not so much in practice. I have tested this with various applications. More or less with 2 megabytes download you can go from nightly to nightly for many apps and this really works in practice. 
I have put in a link here where you can try it for yourself. The next idea is to have a sandbox that makes it not only easy to run an application but also makes it somewhat more secure by confining the application into let's say a read-only file system where it cannot do nasty stuff like deleting files from your home directory or stuff like that. And I have been doing some experiments to that idea. Finally, we also want to integrate with build systems so that making an app image is really easy. In the end, it should really be as easy as compiling stuff the normal way. And for that, we are looking to integrate app image kit with build systems. Now, I have to say that I am really not a build system person. So if there is anyone with experience in this field, please contact me so that we can work together on integrating app image kit on into build systems. So now this idea is out there. And as I said, I have been doing this for about 10 years now. What about the reactions? To be honest, reactions have been mixed. And here are some typical ones. This tool is a solution to a non-problem. This is a quite frequent reaction and many Linux distribution users just don't see the need to have something like app image in addition to the distribution package manager. Well, let's see. Another one, this, if stuff is open source, we don't really need this. Packagers create the packages and ship the needed libs if needed. Well, that's true, but again, Try to download the latest version of your favorite application, let's say Krita 3.0, which was released a couple of days ago. And you will see it's not that easy if you're running, let's say, CentOS 6. Another one. As cool as it might be, apps distributed like this are a security nightmare. Well, this has two sides. Number one is, when I am downloading something from an original application author, chances are that I trust this application and its author anyway, otherwise I shouldn't run the application in the first place. So for me at least, I prefer to download and run applications that are coming directly from the source as opposed to having some middlemen in between where I can never be sure what changes they have done to the software and whether those changes are actually sanctioned by the original application author. The second argument is that we don't have any kind of a sandbox, but as I said before, experiments are underway to provide an optional sandbox to run app images, for example, in a read-only confined space. So getting this kind of feedback for actually a long, long, long time, I was almost done with the idea of doing those software bundles for Linux. And I thought it's really a cultural thing. While this is working reasonably well on OS X and has been working reasonably well in the Apple world for many, many years now, it seemed like Linux users are a bit different and they really don't appreciate the idea until that happened. This is a quote from Linus Torvalds, who, when he played a bit with App Image, came to the conclusion that this is just very cool. And actually, if you go to the link shown at the bottom of the screen, there is a lengthy discussion that involves all the arguments cited before and some more ones. And in the end, Linus is really defending the idea of App Images and App Image Kit. It's a great read. Other people chimed in as well. For example, the current maintainer of the subsurface project, he says the app image approach is really, really useful. From there on, a lot of open source software packages started adopting app images. For example, Krita now provides app images right on their download page as they do for Windows and Mac OS X applications. Or the Scribus project 
which is a desktop publishing application, also provides Linux app images right on their download page, even for development candidates. MuseScore, music application now provides app images not only for the 64-bit but also 32-bit Intel AMD architectures as well as ARM. So you can even run it on phones, tablets or your Raspberry Pi. Now how do you make an app image? It's really not that complicated. Here I show a little Hello World example of repackaging an existing binary. In this case I take a Debian package of the Leafpad application and convert that into an app image. So the first thing I do in the first line is make a Leafpad app application directory and then download the Debian package then go into the apter, unpack the Debian package, copy the icon and the desktop file into the root directory of the apter, and then get the app run file from app image kit. Again, app run is the main entry point into the apter. I talked about this before, and it essentially does all the magic of launching the application. Finally, I get out of the apter, I download App Image Assistant and I use App Image Assistant to convert the apter into an app image. It's really that simple. The result is an app image that runs on, in this case, at least the distribution uh, this uh, binary was coming from and newer distributions. So it's really useful to use binaries that were compiled on the oldest distribution that you can get a package for. Well in the real world what you want to do is probably not just repackage existing binaries but build your own. As I said please do that on an old enough build system. It's uh, best to use the oldest distribution that you can get for which recent compilers and build tools still exist. I have been successful with CentOS 6 for example. Also make sure that there are no hard-coded paths in your application. Otherwise you can patch it away either in the source code or even in your binaries. Then you do the same what I explained before, turning your application into an apter, and then you should bundle any libraries into the apter that might not be there in a recent enough version on each target system. Which means that if you are using a very recent library that your application needs, then you have to package that very recent library inside the app image. Finally, when you have made your app image, it's important that you test it on each target system. Really, this is important. Don't skip this step. I use a bunch of Linux live ISOs for that, where I can easily boot into different operating systems to test every app image that I create. So it really gets interesting when you do this for continuous builds. A continuous build is a system that automatically builds your software each time someone checks in the change. And if you do that and combine it with app images and delta updates, then you can go as a user or as a tester from build to build in literally seconds. This increases the testing velocity by making software fluid. Think of it like Git for binaries. Here is a workflow that I have been using with some success. Whenever I push a commit to GitHub, then Travis, a continuous build service in the cloud, fetches a Docker container that con contains my build system, in this case CentOS 6 with all build dependencies pre-installed, and builds the application and packages it as an app image in the cloud. It then uploads the build 
product to Travis uh, to uh, to Bintray, where the end user can download it. And finally, on the project homepage, we can link to the app images hosted on Bintray. All of this is a fully automatic workflow, which means every time someone pushes a commit to GitHub, then we get a new binary that people can run. To see this in action, go to the Pro Bono PD App Images repository on GitHub. There you can see what I just described in action. There are also some software packages who already do this, MuseScore and Scribus, for example, and feel free to adopt this workflow to other build systems or host workflows and infrastructures. I'm really excited to see what you will be doing with this. So, how can you contribute to App Image Kit? First of all, spread the word. It's important that the word gets out there. People should become aware that there is this solution available and that it's working today. Then it would also be great if you have a favorite application to discuss this idea with the apps upstream application project so that they ideally become convinced to build app images directly themselves and ideally they even would do this for continuous builds which they might be doing anyway today. Some projects do continuous builds just as a test and then throw away the build products. What a waste! They could make app images out of them easily. If you want to get one step further, send a pull request to your favorite upstream application project that builds an app image. But please, only do so after you have tested your app image on various target distributions. Usually some fine tuning is needed until the app image runs satisfactorily on all distributions. Also, you could integrate app image to your build host infrastructure and to your source control management system. Um, the example I gave before, the workflow with GitHub and Travis and Docker and Bintray, something like that, but for your workflow. Finally, you could contribute contribute to App Image Kit itself, which is the tool set to generate app images. For example, the App Image Update tool that we have right now is really just a proof of concept so far and still a bit rough around the edges. We really could need your help in this area. And when in doubt, please don't hesitate and open an issue immediately on github.com slash pro bono pd slash app image kit. So that's it. Thanks for watching.